What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. We're going to talk about some Baby Doge technicals, talking about where Baby Doge is about to go next because we've been on a big downtrend really in the whole overall crypto market. So we're just going to talk about this. Definitely hit that like button and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this financial advice. Let's get straight to it though. So let's talk about what's been happening first for the, like the last few days with Baby Doge and really everything. So everything has been going down, straight down from there. So down 2.6% for the day here with Baby Doge. And you can even see it down here for the seven-day period, only 4.3%. A lot of other cryptos are down way more than 4.3%, like Ethereum. We already know why Ethereum's down, though, because they had their whole merge to the proof of stake. But we'll talk about that in another video because we definitely need to talk about Ethereum Classic and the potential there. But we're going to continue to talk about Baby Doge just in this video, just Baby Doge and a little bit of Bitcoin touching. So as you can see, everything has been down like within like the past seven days. You can even see over here, Bitcoin has taken a huge dive downwards from like two days ago. And now we're really, really getting low here. So let's talk about the Baby Doge technicals first. So as you can see here, when at the second we broke that 1250 support, that it was really holding up really good. But the second we broke it on the 12th, we just went straight down on a huge downtrend here so the next area that we're watching out here for baby doge i've been mentioning this in a lot of my other videos but it's going to go flat to 11 or if that happens to one zero and if one zero happens we could honestly immediately see like a whole zero being added on a baby doge but this is just short term technical so i, I really want to be worried about it in the short term that's if things continue to become bearish like this and also on the 20th through 21st that's when we actually get, you know, the interest rate hikes for U.S. And you got to think about it. Just the news on um, the, the other day that we had, when they seen that on the other day, it just went straight down when the CPI data came out. So there's no telling what can happen when we actually raise the interest rates on the 20th and 21st. So this could be what leads the whole crypto market overall and even Baby Doge down here. Now, like I said, the support is set down here around, I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but like 9Z9. So if you want to look at that support, there's the one, one support that we have down there around 9Z9. And I actually want to zoom in on this even more because this is a very important time in Baby Doge history, May, because that's when we really bottomed out in Baby Doge. So this is a really important time in Baby Doge history, May 2022. So let's talk about that. So when we bottomed out here in Baby Doge, we got went all the way down to 9Z761. So that's the low for Baby Doge. But remember, when you look at how much we've burned from here till then, it's highly unlikely that we'll probably get that low again, especially that we got we have way more investors. A lot of new people have came in on Baby Doge. We have whales in Baby Doge. I don't think we'll probably end up seeing 9Z761 again. So that's why I'm kind of throwing that out the window. But when I look at it, 9Z9 could easily happen, and who knows, maybe 9Z7 could happen too if we had even more crashes coming in the market. But yeah, as you can see here, this was huge resistance for us, and typically our resistance will become our supports. So that's probably where we're going to end up seeing the next support line for Baby Doge because we had huge resistance at 9Z9, and then it finally started to actually break out when it actually hit 1100. And that's what I'm saying. We got to watch the 1100 area, like 1100 flat. Because when it hits 1100 flat, it could skip all of the 1000 area and it could go straight down to 99. And that's kind of how it looks here. Like the second it gets there, it just starts to skyrocket. So we might see the same thing when it's going back down. And something that kind of confirms it is this right here. So you can see over, well, like I said, none of this financial advice, so I can't 100% confirm it. But you can see here, the second it kind of gets around this 1100 area, it starts to act as its support, and then it holds. It actually holds up, and then we continue to pump from there. But the thing is, we now need to see whether or not we can hold that same support as strongly as we did before. Because if we can't, then we're going to see Baby Doge going down big time. And it looks like we're holding, though, because when you look at it, we're really holding like really strong at about 1130, and it got all the way down to about 1125. But we're holding strong at 11.30 right now. So anything can happen there. And I know a lot of people have been mentioning that this is from um, OKX. That's what these charts are for. That people are looking at it and they're like, wait, it's at like 12.80. It's not really at 11.30 or like 12.50 or something like that. But I'll show you because CoinX, uh, Mexi Global, all these different things have different prices for it. But the most volume is coming from OKX. And that is pretty much what I found. 
Now, if we're to look at Mexi Global and also a link in the description for Mexi Global, if you want to check that out, it's kind of the same story here. It's just that it's more, a little bit more expensive, but overall, it's the same thing because it's more expensive. You get more value out of your coins. The other one with OKX is cheaper, so you don't get it as much, but you're getting more coins. So it really cancels itself out. So I really wouldn't worry about the prices, the different prices on it. But if you do want to do like some trading on baby Doge, which you really can't do unless you get more than 21% a day, well, really more than 20% in a day, which is going to be 20.01 if you want. But yeah, you got to get more than 20% in a day to day trade baby Doge. So it really doesn't matter the exact price points, but they're still going in the same direction. That's pretty much what I'm saying. All these charts are going in the same direction. Some of them are just at different prices because you can even go over to gate.io and you can see over here, it says 1277 for the one that we're on now, which is Mexi Global. But then if you go over to gate.io, 1132, and most of them will say the 1100 one. And the one that has the most volume at the 1100 one is OKX. So I just like to use OKX for the technicals. But yeah, anyways, like I said, it looks like we're holding up strong here on 1130. So we can definitely see maybe a huge drop if we start to get below 1100 flat. Not, not not saying like 1130, we might go down to another level here, but then stop at about 1100 and 11100 will actually be like right here. But like if we do that and then we just pass 1100, there's the potential that we continue to go down from there. So let's talk about Bitcoin too. Now I've been talking about these technical indicators, but they're not 100% fail proof because there's just not enough details. You know, there's just not enough attention to the details right here because it says high activity expected. But wouldn't it be good to know if it's high buying activity or high selling activity? So people who are just getting in on these type of indicators, if you get on these type of indicators with uh, trading view here and you and you look at this, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the high activity for buying and high activity for selling. But here's the main difference. This whole time it was pumping all the way from here, it was overbought. So the oscillator was telling you, look, this is overbought. So that's more than likely going to be high selling activity and not high buying activity. So that's one of the things you got to look at. And you can actually see when we start to ramp up here, the selling started to stop and then the overbuying started to happen. So anytime it says overbuying, you can always expect a drop to come right after the overbought area. And we were just oversold a lot there. So you can see it just started to ramp up here, continuing to rise here at Bitcoin, stopping all the way up here about 22.5K. But that whole time Bitcoin was running up, it did not say high activity. But it was a green area. The green areas are a supply and demand of more demand. So it was like there was pretty much more demand in this whole green area. The second we got there, we just had so much momentum. And the funny part is, is that it didn't say high activity expected for buying. It didn't say high activity down here either. And that's because all this is already high activity, but it's too much. It's overbought. That's why you got to look at both, both indicators because it really matters with the oscillator as well as these candlesticks. But now that you're seeing it dropping, now there's moderate activity of selling now there's lower activity of selling until you bottom out right here and that's why we're looking at this next green bar right here so this next green bar for bitcoin is pretty much our next support line and our next support line it pretty much shows 19.5k right now we're at 19.7k so we're really close but it's still selling off which means we're probably going to continue to get a little bit more selling inside of bitcoin we might even see bitcoin going back down to about 18k like we were before before we had that major unnecessary pump but it was just leading up to the CPI data. Uh, Luna Classic was going crazy. So people were just bullish overall in crypto, playing with their profit money, throwing it in different projects, making everything go up. And then everyone sells out. And I do feel like a lot of people are probably about to start going back in on Luna Classic. And I'll explain that in another video. But yeah, we, we pretty much got everything out the way for Bitcoin. And now if you do want to know short term technicals for Bitcoin, like very short term, like I said, we're going back down to 19.6K. And then we might be able to, you know, rise back up to 19.8K before the next drop inevitably happens. And we won't get our next pump inside of Bitcoin until we get up to this high activity area. So if we can get above 20.3K here with Bitcoin, we're going to have a high activity. Now, it could be high buying activity, could be high selling activity, just like last time. But you have to pay attention to the oscillator. Right now, selling is happening. And you can actually start to see this selling wave forming up now. So we're going to see that selling, like I said, bring us back down here. This is the only 15. This is only the 15 M chart, so it's going to bring us back down to like 19.5k, possibly a little bit lower. Then trying to retest like 19.8k, so we can get up to 20.3k. And if we can actually get past 20.3k, that's when we see our next resistance area appear 21 
21.2K. And then our next one will be up here, 21.8K. But then that's when the activity slows down. So it could more than likely end up dropping again from there if we don't have a strong overall global financial market. So that's pretty much what we got uh, got coming for us here inside of Bitcoin and you know crypto in general. Now, I also wanted to say something else about Luna Classic because I will be making a whole video on Luna Classic, but I'm just going to say this out right, right now. I think the money is probably going to start flowing in on Luna Classic. But before you even decide that, look at what comes next. We haven't even hit our next support down here. So the next support for Luna Classic, like the next major support, it adds on another zero. If you kind of look at it, it does. But like I said, you always want to look at the oscillator as well. So I'm going to do a whole video on this, but I guess I'm just going to put this out here. This bullish signal, buying is about to start flowing into Luna Classic. High activity expected right here. I'm just going to put that out right there like that. I don't know if it's 100% true. That's why I'm going to do a whole other video on it. And I'll probably look into it a little bit more before I make that video. But like I said, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Definitely do your own due diligence. But yeah, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube channel out for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment in the comment section. And as always, I'll be back with another video.